Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. We are God's Church of Love Online. And as most of you can see, I'm back in action now. I've got my computer up and running. And we're back to the original YouTube channel and my, the original email. And I believe God wants to encourage and admonish his people. Isaiah 42, starting at verse 1. Behold my servant, whom I uphold mine elect in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry nor lift up nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break. Now, for those of you who wonder what that means, a bruised reed is like talking about broken people with broken hearts, broken spirits, living through broken promises and the disappointments that comes with it. Some people have broken lives. So he says, a bruised reed shall he not break, and the smoking flax shall not be quenched, or shall he not quench. Listen, a smoking flax is like looking at a a stick or a candle or something that was before on fire. And now the flame is almost completely out, but there's still a little spark. There's enough heat where if you just blow a little bit, it'll start to ignite again. Well, what God is saying is that that little bit of fire that you may have left, he's not going to blow it out because you're not on fire anymore. Because God knows that life will tend to put out fires. Life will tend to kill your joy. Life will tend to diminish your hope. It will tend to lessen your faith or weaken your faith. Disappointments, crisis after crisis, trial after trial can weaken death after death, can weaken your whole resolve when it comes to the things of God. And you start echoing what your enemies are saying. Where is your God? Well, God says he's not going to put that out. He's going to allow the spark to remain in hopes that you reignite, in hopes that you gain your ground, you gain your footing. All right. I love the Bible. It has so many different hidden little meanings. Mm, mm, mm. He shall not fail nor be discouraged till he set judgment in the earth, and the isle shall wait for his law. Thus saith the Lord, thus saith God the Lord, he that created the heavens and stretched them out, he that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it, he that giveth breath, unto the people upon it, and spirit to them that walk therein. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness. Let me put Pat's spin on that sentence right there. Let's put a negative spin on it. I, the Lord, did not call you in sin. So now let's go back. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness and will hold thine hand, and will keep thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people, for light of the Gentiles. Here's another thing that the Lord just popped in my head when he said, I will hold thy hand. Have you ever witnessed a child walking with his parent, hand in hand? Mama or papa's holding their little baby in their hand, they're walking side by side. And something happens, maybe the baby drops a ball. You know how we drop the ball. <laughs> and they let go of their parent's hand and go running after the ball. And sometimes they have a mishap and they run out in the street after the ball before the parent can even do anything. It's all over. They've either been hit by a car, injured by a car, they've fallen, or... Maybe nothing happened at all, but they just put themselves in danger's way by letting go of their parents' hand and dashing out 
following their own instincts. That's what we do as human beings. We walk with the Lord. Then we let his hand go. He holds our hand, but we let him go. He's not letting us go. We let him go. And that's when all hell starts breaking loose in our lives. See, even if you're walking with your parent through a blizzard, even if you're walking with your parent through a hurricane, if you're walking with your parent through a rainstorm, a lightning and, and thunderstorm, as long as your hand is in your parent's hand, that's the safest place for you to be. But many of you, when the storm comes, I'm getting this hot off the press, y'all. When the storm comes, when the wind blows, when, the, when the, the, the torrential rains fall and the lightning's flashing, what do you do? You react and you let go of God and run to your own way. That's when you put yourself in danger's way. That's when you are vulnerable to the elements and to the demonic attacks. That's when you tend to give in to temptations more readily. But as long as you keep your hand in the Father's, you're safe. You're in the ark of safety. All right. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness and will hold thine hand. I love that. And will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people for the light of the Gentiles to open. This is what we're here for, y'all. To open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from prison. And then they sit in darkness out of the prison house. We're not to run around chasing our own little agendas. We're not to run around uh, planning our own little way. Like the kid letting go of mom or pop's hand to run out in the street after a ball. No. We are to keep our hand in the father's hand. And as we keep our hand in the father's hand, we become more and more aware of our purpose for being on this planet. And the more aware we become and the closer we are to God, the quicker we are to start moving in our purpose, not in the little schemes and plans of men and their little games, but in God's purpose. And what happens when you're in God's purpose? You end up being a witness for him. You end up drawing people to the Lord. Hmm. Wow. And when you draw people to the Lord, people get delivered. That's bringing them out of prisons. When you draw people to the Lord, people start getting free and they start getting hope. Hmm. Yeah. So they're not sitting in their own darkness anymore. They have been pulled out of bondage. They have been pulled out of, of entanglements of life, of self-destruct mode. Verse 8, I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Behold, the former things are come to pass. In other words, the former things, they're done. That's over and done with. That's spilt milk. That's water under the bridge. And new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise. From the end of the earth, ye that go down to the sea and all that are therein in the isles and the inhabitants thereof. Woo! Verse 13. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. Wow. I have long holding my peace. I have been still and refrained myself. Now will I cry like a travailing woman. I will destroy and devour at once. I will make waste mountains and hills and dry up all their herbs and I will make the rivers islands and I will dry up the pools. Listen, 
This is what I love about God. Verse 16. Because we're in the season of judgment, y'all. So you have to decide what side are you going to be on. And as long as you're on the right side, you're safe. You're protected. You're guided. You're kept. Verse 16. And I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. You know how many people are walking blind? I'm not talking about with a white cane, y'all. There's so many people out there that can't see their destiny for their nose. They can't see anything other than what's happening in their life right here, right now. They have no clue all that God has prepared for them because they have not asked. They have not acknowledged him in all their ways. So they're like a blind man trying to grope through the darkness because they have no clue. But God says, I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them. Those things you don't understand, you don't get those quandaries, those those, those things that go on in your life that seem to blur your vision and dull your senses, God will take away the darkness, take away the pain, and help you see and understand what's really going on. Hmm. Wow. I will bring the blind, by the way. <coughs> they knew not. <laughs> Excuse me. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and the crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. Hmm. For those of you who don't trust God, for those of you who are not willing to wait on the Lord and be of good courage while he's working things out for you. And you got to let go of his hand and go handle everything yourself, your own way. Verse 17 applies to you. They shall be turned back. They shall be greatly ashamed that trust in graven images that say, to the molten images, ye are our gods. Wow. Okay, I'm going to stop there for a minute. A lot of times we don't realize that we have set up idols. For some men, women, just women. Let me say it streetwise. Women's. Yeah, women. Hot stuff. Brick house. That's their idol. Mm-hmm. Sex in the bed, sex on the porch, sex in the chair, sex in the car. That's their idol. For women, it's the same thing. But with them, they're looking at a man to rescue them, to fulfill them, to gratify them, to make them feel whole and beautiful inside and to make their life worth living. No, sorry, y'all. You're both looking at the wrong thing. Only God can do that. And let me tell you, when God gets a hold of you, and you get a hold of him, hand in hand, y'all, whoa, life becomes an adventure and a journey rather than an obstacle course. And you will run into obstacles because that's life. But as long as your hand is in the hand of the man that's still the water, your hand and you and your life and destiny are safe because God will hold your hand and keep you. He will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on him. Is that what you're doing? Or is your mind on lover boy? Is your mind on that brick house down the street? with all that she's got going with it. 
Where's your mind? In that dollar bill in the gambling casino? Where's your mind stayed on? On the next hot ticket? Playing the numbers? Playing the lotto? Where's your, where's your mind stayed on? Hmm. Something, huh? We got so many idols, we've lost count. And we don't even recognize them for what they are. But you must, if you want to get all you can out of your life, all the good, if you want to be all you can and reach your fullest potential in life and live out your purpose, you've got to keep your hand in the hand of God. You've got to keep your mind stay on him. When was the last time you opened up his word? When was the last time you said anything to him? You know, there are times when you will hear from God if you close yourself up, sit in your car, sit in the bathroom, sit in the bedroom. If you live alone, you can sit in any room, like Jeanette and me. <laughs> but, are you sitting, waiting on God, listening for him to lead you to scripture? There are times, I'm going to tell you what a big baby I am at 67 years of age. There are times I just say, God, I just need you to tell me what you think about me. I need you to reaffirm me. Speak into my life. Let me know what you have in store for me. I remember when the Lord called me off of food stamps. And I said, Lord, you really want me? I don't know why. It seemed like he's keeping me under the radar for some reason. But for some reason, twice he did that to me. I'm still off of food stamps. When I asked him this last time, it was harder than the first time. I said, Lord, I need to know that I know that I know that you're really telling me to do this. Because in all honesty, it's a little scary for me on my fixed income. God plainly, and I'm going to show you what I mean by being led to scripture. Do you talk to him? Do you ask him questions? The biggest part of your conversation should be to ask him questions. Acknowledge me in all your ways. Ask, 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 and he will direct your path. Answer, answer, answer. Listen to what he gave me. He gave me Psalms. Mm -hmm. I could see it in my mind. As soon as I asked the question, I saw in my mind's eye Psalms 37. Now, I knew that Psalms 37 had some nice scripture in it, but I didn't know that it had these particular sentences. And when God answers you directly to show you how he will directly answer your question, your specific question, we're talking food, food stamps. Hmm. Verse 3, trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. <laughs> Commit thy way unto the Lord. This is verse 5. Commit thy way unto the Lord, and he shall bring it to pass. You know, the thing I love is that God knows how to answer you explicitly, but you have to learn to ask specific, detailed questions. You almost have to go through your, your questions like a fine tooth comb. There are times it could actually feel like you're cross-examining him. But you're not doubting him. What you're trying to do is build up your faith in what he's saying and in the fact that he is saying that to you. 
Then you could take it to the bank. Wow. This is what I want to read. I, I'm going down a little further because I want you to see how God, here it is. Verse 19, this is all dealing with food, food stamps, provision, listen. Verse 19, they shall not be ashamed in the evil time. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. I'm going to stop there for now. God let me know in so many ways. You drop the food stamps, I've got you covered. That's $200 worth of food stamps, y'all. That's God. Only God can do something like that. So, as a result, I backed up off of meat so I can keep my grocery bill halfway so I can use the other hundred for other things. But I mean, God provides, and I'm telling you, when God is first on your list, when God's priorities are number one on your list, in your life, when you prioritize God first, God's ways, God's holiness, not your sexual desires, not your need for money, not your schemes and dreams, no, not uh, Mary Sue and Sally or, or Tom, Dick and Harry, none of that, no. When God is number one, and like for example, years ago, and I'm, I'm giving you practical examples right now, years ago, I was asking God to get me out of the workplace, but I knew I had to work to make a living and I knew I had to go to school to prepare. So Lord, what do you want me to take? I'm waiting for him to say, cause I'm an artist, I'm a portrait artist. Illustration, graphic arts. I mean, I, I'm just, I got all these dreams of sugar plums dancing in my head. And they all pertain to art. What did God tell me? He puts a sign up in midair, a vision of a sign that says C-O-S-M-E-T-O-L-O-G-Y. Cosmetology? Huh? Now, I've been hustling, bootlegging at home. But I didn't know that I was to take that seriously. That was just a little side change. That's what God did. He took it seriously. And he said, that's what I want you to do. Now, I was already hired by a job as an interpreter for the deaf in lightweight classes. I'm not skilled in sign language like, like uh, certified interpreters are. But I could do lightweight interpreting, and that's what they hired me to do. Gave me the schedule, everything. Two weeks before, I had to call her and say, sorry, but God told me to take to go to school full time. Full time for me was 40 hours a week in that class. Got my license, never had to work for anybody since. Self-employed for the rest of my life. I went through three cars. I went through two homes. Never had to get a job. God provided, provided, provided. Crazy. He would send customers from the woodwork when it was time for my car payment. I mean, he he just, whoo, he opened up the windows of heaven for me. Why? Because I asked him, I got an answer, and I acted on it. That's why. He didn't tell me to go get a degree. He told me to go do hair. So what did my salon end up becoming? My pulpit. I led people to the Lord. I prayed for people that were sick. I encouraged people through the word. I witnessed to people. Some of us just sat up there and had church like Jeanette and me. We talk about the Lord, the things of the Lord, the blessings of the Lord, the lessons of the Lord. I'm telling you, when you're in your purpose, my vocational calling was to be a hairstylist. My spiritual calling was to be a preacher. And I'm staying in my lane. When you're in your lane, the blessings come. You're looking for God's blessings. 
when you live a life of holiness to the point where it's sacrificial, there are times I obey to the point of tears, not because I was all that holy, but because I fear God and I want his best. And in order to get his best, I got to give him at least half my best. So there were times when I did not want to do things God's way. See, these are the things we don't think of when we walk with the Lord. There were times when I had to keep my legs closed when I wanted to, you know what? There were times when I had to stay home when I wanted to go places I didn't have any business going. And I sat there feeling bored and lonely and forgotten. And yes, I cried like a big old baby. One time I cried so hard, God himself came and kept me company in my living room. Supernatural encounters. When you obey God to the point where it hurts, he honors your obedience. That's why Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, Therefore, <clears throat> brethren, <clears throat> I beseech you by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy. Let me repeat that. Holy. One more time. Holy unto God, which is your reasonable service. That's the least you can do. And be not conformed to this world. What are you listening to? What are you putting in your spirit? But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Listen, sacrifice, sacrificial giving is not just digging in your pocket and putting some money in the plate. Sacrificial giving is giving of yourself, giving the part of yourself that you don't want to give up. Giving up your rights. Sacrificial giving is standing there feeling like you got egg on your face when you could more easily cuss somebody out and tell them off and save face. That sacrificial giving. See, when you line yourself up, even when it hurts you, when you line yourself up with God, even when you feel humiliated, when you line yourself up with God, even when you feel like you come out on a losing end, no, you win. I don't care if you lose money doing it, you win. You win with God. That's why we cannot lean to our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge him and he will direct our path. We've got to keep our hand in our father's hand in order to avoid a lot of pitfalls. I ask you, Lord, to keep everyone that's in this service as the apple of your eye. Keep them under your divine protection. Surround them with your guardian, warring, ministering angels and keep all evil as far away from them as the east is from the west. And keep them from all evil as far away as the east is from the west. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen.